Okay, DIYers. Today's video is on um, LG chem cells, which are a lithium polymer chemistry. And you can buy these batteries online, um, and they're cut out of larger packs. So you can actually piece them together by creating your own bus bars and have one of the highest energy density batteries available right now for a really low price. Just to give you an example, um, I'll show you. This is a 24 volt battery that I'm building right now, and I'll explain how it works and how I put it together. But this is it, and I put in those uh, that the baked beans there, or not baked beans, but organic black beans, because I wanted to show you how small this is. That is a very small battery for the amount of power that it puts out. That's actually. This is three, these cells are 3.7 nominal volts, and there's seven of these, which gives you a 24 volt uh, battery pack. And this is uh, 24 volts at 120 amp hours. So that's equivalent to 240 amp hours at 12 volts. Just to give you an idea um, of how good that is, right behind it, is a uh, that's my um, lithium iron phosphate battery put that can there so you can see that is 180 amp hours total and uh, you can see it's much larger than this it is a it is a lot and it's a lot heavier too this is 44 pounds this is maybe 35 pounds i'd have to figure it out exactly but uh, this is light super high energy density and um, these probably last a little bit longer but they're literally like five times as expensive each of these cells are about 80 to 85 dollars depending on how many you buy uh, at this time and this is like may of 2020 um, these guys are 50 bucks and you can get them cheaper if you buy them in huge packs down as cheap as like 42 43 um, I was really sensitive about getting, I didn't want used batteries, so I got ones that came out of new packs, and they test as so. So, um, that's what I'm building here, just to give you an idea. Okay, so how you do this with these cells is, these actually, as you can see, they, they are, they're separate. They come apart, just like that. But I've tied these together. They come separately. I've tied these together with homemade bus bars, which are right here. And this is a copper pipe. Uh, one inch is what I used. And then you have to form them around the end of these, these uh, carriers for these batteries. Uh, and then these tabs are cut with a Dremel at their factory when they take them out of the LG chem packs. And so the tabs are not always cut the same length. They're not the cut the same length. So you have to, you have to kind of, um, you probably need to sink two screws. So you get a nice connection, make sure all everything's clean when you put these together. So this is obviously a series pack right here. And this is uh this is a total of, of seven, 24 volt, um, setup and, uh, so this is actually um, tied here. So this is positive, negative, and then the negative to the positive on the next one. So I flipped them around. And then back here, there's another bus bar here. And so it just, it's series down the pack, just like that, all the way to the bottom. Negatives down here. And right now, these are charging with um, a regular... Um, solar charge controller that Epever 4210AN, which is a 40 amp, and um, I'm running 1440 watts of solar, which is connected. I'll make a separate video about that. And um, this pack, um, these these alligator alligator clips are are charging this thing right now, even though it's not very sunny at this moment. But um, I don't recommend hooking up um, anything this way. The only reason I'm using alligator clips, you should get it. You got to get wire crimpers and, and use lugs and, uh, you know, like this. Uh, 
and um, this is just hooked up with these clips because I'm switching these back and forth. So the uh, all the charge controllers, just about as far as I know, will do at least do 12 and 24 volt, and and they sense that automatically. This one does 12 and 24 volt, so you just take the the 12 volt values and you double them. All right. So when you if you when you're going to switch, you actually need to un depower the everything. So you disconnect the batteries, you disconnect your solar, which in my case is right here. This is coming in from my solar array. And um, I put these MC4s there just so I could do that quickly. And, um, and then you hook the new battery up and it senses the voltage. And then you make sure your settings right. And with this, this particular controller, you just go to the battery voltage when you're scrolling through on the select button. And then when you get to the battery voltage, you just hold the button down on the right button, the enter button for a little bit, and you can pick the battery chemistry that you want, charge profile that you want. These don't come pre-programmed with lithium. Not to mention, nothing comes pre-programmed with lithium at this chemistry. This is lithium polymer, all right? This is a 3.6 nominal voltage, and this is completely depleted at three volts, and it is completely charged uh, to 100% at four volts. So this is an odd profile, all right, for each of these cells. So I'm talking about one cell, not all seven. That's that's a different discussion. So um, these require, to some extent, a custom profile. Now, that is programmable, but it's a complete pain in the butt to program it. And I actually have a, a Victron coming uh, 150, which is 100 volt max which can't be exceeded, and then 50 amp output max, uh, which can be exceeded. You can, you can have more amps um, on your system. Um, over paneling, they call that, which is fine. The charge controller will only put out 50. So if you're, if you're pushing 3,000 watts and you have a 50 amp charge controller, you're just not going to get all the power at peak, peak sun. Uh, but it will generate power when the sun's not good, and when it's cloudy, it'll generate more power than less panels would. So there's, there, it's not stupid to over panel. It's uh, panels are cheap. I got my 360 watt panels for $140 each. They're used, but who cares? They last like 25, 30 years, uh, and mine are made by uh, effectively um, Samsung. They're called S Power panels. So, uh, anyways, that's another discussion. I'll make another video about that. But so these are tied together and uh, they are right now they're charging. And the, the profile that I picked in here is gel because it corresponds really well with the charge profile of this. I do recommend looking up lithium polymer um, discharge curve and you'll see that they start off at like four volts. I think you can push them up to like 4.2, but they quickly, they quickly fall down to close to their nominal voltage around 3.6. Uh, you know, maybe a little higher, 3.8, um, 3.6, and then they hold that voltage all the way into the point where they're about to start discharging very quickly. And so it's a, they're a great discharge curve. So they'll fall off at that point and, and drop down to three, and then you're just, you don't want to over discharge any lithium chemistry because it, it damages the cells if you do it repeatedly. So Keep an eye on that. That's why you get a BMS. And these are going to get a BMS before they go into use. This is just a test bench. So these, under the gel profile, um, these charge, the bulk charge would be at 28.4 volts. And uh, the float charge is at 27.6. That's about perfect for these. Um, it'll keep them, now you are char you're charging them up all the way, which you really want these guys to last a long time. You're not going to charge them all the way. You're going to charge them like 85 or 90%. But I frankly, this is test bench scenario. When these go into uh, use, they're going to get the, um, they're going to get the uh, programmable uh, charger or the easily programmable uh, MPPT charge controller, which is the uh, Victron. Uh, or they're going to be on my, um, uh, Al, uh, uh, excuse me, on me, I forgot the name of the company that makes the other one. Um, MPP Solar actually is the, I have another unit that is a multi-charger as well, but it also has a built-in MPPT and it's programmable. You have to program it. Um, in that case, you have to figure it out. The EPEV or software is so cumbersome, it's not even worth figuring out. 
But Victron, if you're going with a more modular system, the Victron charge controller is perfect because it's easily programmable and it has Bluetooth built in. If you get the smart solar, not the blue, but the smart solar has a Bluetooth built in. So it's a really great um, system. They're expensive, but you know what? They'll probably last forever. So yeah, if you buy a Victron, you only have to buy it once. Let's just leave it at that. But so that's the that's the basic setup. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything here. Just think about that charge profile. Um, you want to get the your charge controller at least set on gel so that it's bulk charges at 28.4, which is just above the top of charge for these. Uh, but then it'll reach that and it'll drop down to a 27.6 volt float charge. Uh, top of charge for these is 28. They will, of course, you can push them higher, but it's just not, you don't want to do that. That's how you start fires and things like that. Uh, this is a 24 volt system. I'm going to do a video on 48 volt, two banks of these running with my MPP, uh, MPP solar 48 volt, uh, multi-charger with MPPT. That's a really cool system and that's super efficient. So, um, one more thing before I start, before I stop on this video, um, this, the charge controller. So the reason that people go to, uh, 24 volt systems and then to 48, um, uh, which we'll discuss 48 later, but 24 volt is much more efficient than 12. And there's a good reason, very good reasons to do this. So it's easy to get a step down. This was like 60 bucks. This is a step down from 24 to 12.5. So this will run your, your 12 volt systems. This is 60 amps and it was only $65 or something. It's made by this, I don't even know. It's a, it's a Chinese uh, controller. Now you got to be careful with this one because the the terminals, you see, they're all wrapped up in tape there because they are way too close to each other. And you will uh, short this if you're not very careful. I wired it all first before I hooked it up elsewhere and made sure everything was really well insulated. But um, the reason that you run 24 volt systems is you save so much money on these charge controllers. So this is a 40 amp. And, and as you get above 30, even 20 amps, they start getting expensive. This one was about 125 bucks. So this will do 40 amps at 12 volts. Um, that's not a lot, actually, at 12 volts. This thing limit, limits out at 545 watts of, uh, of solar. So that's, you're not, that's, only, that, that's only one and a half of my current panels, and it's uh, not even one and a half. And then, uh, but, if, but with a, at the 24 volt scenario, this will still push 40 amps. But at 24 volts, 40 amps is equivalent to 80. So I can go up to 1,045 watts on the solar array. And so you, you figure your solar array is not going to ever, hardly ever run at 100% anyways. Usually people take like 80% or 85% of the, of the maximum potential. And then you can size your charge controller based on that. If you just take your total wattage uh, and then... Uh, then you just take your, your total wattage, like 14.4 in this case, and you would just uh, divide that by your battery, your system voltage, and that'll tell you how many amps you're going to get um, at, at the total 100% at output. But you can take 80% of that, and you're pretty much going to get uh, the potential of your solar panels. You know, may, if you take 90, you're definitely going to get it. You're rarely going to have perfect sun and all the panels in the sun, everything perfect, unless you're going to build a solar, like a sun tracking system and put it at the highest point in your neighborhood. So anyways, any cloud that goes by ruins that anyway. So just don't, don't even stress about it. This stuff is, you know, this is inexact. You're dealing with mother nature here. So that pretty much sums it up. Um, so uh, the 24 volt system is going to be pretty cool. And I'll talk about what I'm up to with the other batteries in a different video. But this, I'm just going to put this, let this, put this video out about this 24 volt system. 48 is a whole bunch of new uh, discussion and considerations because 48 volts is actually a, not a good voltage for humans. That's above 30 volts. You can shock yourself, and it 48 volts can actually stop your heart. So you want to be very careful with it. It'll shock you. And if you have wet hands or something, you can stop your heart. It's just not a good voltage for humans. So you want to be extra careful when you're dealing with a 48-volt system. So if you're going to start combining these, 
um, uh, or anything and getting up to 48 volts, just be a lot more careful where uh, electricians gloves uh, and realize that everything's going to arc. It's going to spark when you when you try to um, hook them up, even at 24 volts, they start doing that. So uh, just things, to, uh, food for thought, things to think about. We'll talk to you later.